Hello everyone, uh, in this video I'll be doing uh, another more deeper overlook of Xiaomi Notebook Pro 2020 edition. Uh, this one has a 10th generation Intel CPU and a built-in GeForce MX250. Uh, I've had some requests to about the uh, display panel and uh, its cooling system, so I'll be doing a little bit of a uh, uh, deeper dive into it. I'll actually unscrew the bottom plate to see how the cooling is done. Uh, so let's do that now and we'll get into the benchmarks after this. Okay, I finally managed to get the car open. Uh, it took a little bit of work. Uh, all these screws had to be removed and there is also one special uh, screw here under this rubber boot. We had to take it off. That is pretty simple. Then you have to carefully pry open the, uh, the panel around the perimeter. Uh, try to be careful. It did take some force here and there, but hey, got it off. So here's the panel. Here's how it is inside. We can see uh, that we have we can see that we have a removable battery. That's nice. Uh, we can have two SSDs. Uh, this one is actually Intel 660p. Uh, dual fans and uh, GPU and CPU are seated here. As I can see, it's pretty much similar if not the same to the previous generation or previous model with the, the eighth generation CPU so yeah uh, next thing I'm gonna fire this up and do some benchmarks okay so I've installed Windows uh, on this laptop fresh English version and uh, it doesn't come with all the drivers by default so as we can see, a lot of devices are missing drivers, but it's really easy to set up. All we have to do is go to uh, Xiaomi official support page, uh, find the model of this laptop and download the full driver pack. Uh, they have a full driver pack for this. I will give a link in the description below. So I've downloaded it and extracted it to the, my uh, C folder. Uh, these two are some Chinese software show me software stuff i'm not going to install that but the rest are the actual drivers so what i recommend is first installing the intel uh, chipset driver we'll install it first and then continue with the rest of the drivers i will speed through this process okay here we go this one is the known device i'm gonna quickly check what it is okay so I simply had to connect to the internet and search online and it found some radio controller device uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is if anybody knows please leave uh, what it is in the comments okay so one last thing left to do is to install a real tech driver since this was coming by default did not work so we go to real tech and install it and as always I'll speed up through the process all right I'm gonna restart my computer and I'm going to see if I need anything extra if so I'll let you know but after this I will just start installing my uh, benchmark software and start doing benchmarks okay so I've installed all the tools I needed um, and let's take a look at the uh, CPU temperatures on idle and loaded. So uh, right now we can see the temperature is around 50 degrees. That's with OBS running in the background, but uh, without OBS running and recording, it was around 35, 36 idle. Uh, the fans on the laptop are not spinning right now, so they don't turn on until, I don't know, let's say 70 degrees, I think. Uh, let's see at hardware info. Okay, so I know somebody wanted to see uh, the display panel on this laptop, so let's see if this one gets recognized. There, there it is. It's a sharp manufactured panel. Here's the uh, SKU if anybody wants it. 
Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna do some benchmarks. I'm gonna do a Cinebench R20 benchmark and then a Haven. Uh, but I am going to turn off the OBS recording for this one uh, so that we're not affecting the CPU uh, with OBS. I'll just do the screenshots and uh, you'll see them after this. Okay, as we can see from the results, it's not a too powerful CPU, but it's still performing quite well considering it's a low power CPU. Uh, when I first started the benchmark, the CPU went up to around 4.7 GHz with turbo, uh, spin up the fans uh, quite loudly, but then after about 15 seconds it dropped down to uh, 3 GHz and the temperature stayed around 65 degrees. Uh, around 4.7 GHz the temperature is around 80-85 degrees. And uh, all the tests were done with AC power plugged in and the ambient temperature of around 21 Celsius. Overall I think this is a very well made laptop, uh, perfect for some creativity work, office work and possibly some gaming. I did have a little bit of issues with the touchpad here and there, it seems like it's liking to right click instead of left click a lot. Uh, but that's my only complaint about it. Uh, otherwise, thumbs up. And if anybody has any questions about this model or something else, please leave comments and I'll try to get back to you.